Hello everybody, this is Diane, and this is my first tutorial where I'm actually speaking. I did the one tulip one um, in pieces because I don't know how to edit, and this I'm going to do in pieces also because I still don't know how to edit um, <laughs> videos. So I will do my best. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm excited that there was so much interest in wanting to do this painting. I really love the, the boat painting, and it really isn't as difficult as it looks. It's just, you gotta have some patience um, working through the different layers and letting it dry. And there's just some few techniques that I'm gonna share with you all that I've learned over the past um, few months. I'm not a professional, um, I, I don't claim to be. Um, I just wanted to share what I do know. So first of all, I took, this is like a, a half sheet of a 12 by um, 12 by nine arches, 140 pound paper. I usually prefer the 300 pound, but I know not everyone has access to that or has that. Um, I just like, like it because it's very thick. It takes a lot of water and it just rarely buckles because it's just so thick. But I wanted to use the 140 pound um, just because that's usually what everyone, most everyone has, um, just to to do it on that. So I've already transferred the painting on here, the outline, I'm sorry, the outline of the boat. I put some washi tape around the edges, and the reason I like the washi tape um, for paintings is that um, it's very, very thin, and it gets into the grooves and the texture of the paper so that... Um, Hopefully, fingers crossed, when you lift it up, you've got some clean edges. And I just noticed on over here, I didn't quite go the whole way. So I need to, to patch that up. Can't believe I did that. Oh, well. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so I've got the, the outline on here, and I've put a piece of tape across the the horizon to make sure that the horizon, the sky, and the water don't just bleed all together. And it also makes a very, very clean line. I hope it's, um, I hope it's measured correctly. I'd hate to have a crooked horizon line, but it is what it is. Um, so I've got some colors mixed here. I've got cerulean, ultramarine blue, indigo, lemon yellow, and magenta. And these are going to be the colors for the sky. I may throw in something later. I'm not really a good planner whenever I'm doing paintings. I, I'm kind of spastic. I just will do start doing something like, oh, I want to put this color in here. What will this do? And sometimes I'm like, well, that probably wasn't a good idea. But I'll, I'll try to be more thoughtful and, and plan it out for this painting. And I probably don't have enough colors of any of these. I'm really bad about um, not mixing up enough color and have to add more color as I go. And that's just me. Got my water here. And I've got a, um, a dish cloth here. It's like a cheesecloth type of material that I, whenever I'm smoothing edges, I will always dap the, the, um, the brush on here to take some of the water out. Um, sometimes I do that with paint if, I, if I'm wanting to make sure that I don't have too much paint. So I am always dabbing that. And I always have a paper towel kind of wadded up in my left hand to fix mistakes, to dab things, to sometimes tap my brush on it. Um, I just, I, I can't paint unless I have a paper towel in my left hand. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to put something behind here, just, just the washi tape thing, to elevate this just a tad so that as I'm doing the paint on here, it's all gonna be coming rolling downhill um, so that we can maybe hopefully get some pretty cool um, sky effects here. So I don't think I can actually talk while I paint so, um, and I certainly can't sing while I paint. You don't, you definitely don't want that. So I'm just gonna get started here. We're gonna put a wash of water here. I 
I actually am going to paint over the birds because I'm, when I do do the birds at the end, it's going to be done in a dark color, so it's not going to, it's not really going to matter. But I am going to avoid the edges of the boat here. And I should be using a bigger brush to help with that. So I've got, let's see, this is like a, a one inch flat brush. So I'm just going to wet the whole sky. I kind of have to turn it on the edge and kind of get the light to shine, reflect against the water to see that I've got all of it coated with water. And I think I do. And typically what I do is once I have a complete wash of water on it, I'll let it sit for a couple of seconds, you know, 30 seconds, 20 seconds, or something like that, just to make sure that the water kind of gets soaked into the paper some. I see I kind of went over the edge of the boat, the outline of the boat, but I can fix that with this because it's in my left hand all the time. Okay, so we're going to start the, the sky. We're going to start with some yellow and kind of let it bleed down some. And at the top, we're going to start with some different blues and let it kind of bleed towards the center. And then we're going to dash some pink here and there. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do this all in one fell swoop. It probably will be a second video to finish the sky. I don't want it all to bleed together too much. Um, but like I said, I don't plan things out well, and um, we'll just see how this goes. So I'm using a, um, let's see, I'm using a number four, I don't know if you can see that, a number four um, Rhapsody um, round sable, Kalinsky sable one. It probably could be a bigger one, but um, I'm just going to start using this. And whenever I smooth the edges, Simply Simmons makes the most awesome brushes for that. They take a beating. They're really, really good for that. Um, I don't really do a lot of watercolor with them, but I do use them for the dry brush technique and smoothing the edges. Um, if you kind of use those techniques on your um, expensive brushes, it does kind of start fraying the, the hairs of the brush and it's not too good for it. So. I use the cheap ones for that, and Simply Simmons are just perfect. I mean, I've used this for several months, and it hasn't shown anywhere at all. And this, it's about $3. I think it was like two ninety five dollars or something like that. Um, they're usually between 2 and $4. So when they start wearing, you just feel, throw them away and don't feel so bad about it. Okay, so let's get started with some, I think that the color here is um, lemon yellow. We're going to have a, several layers on this thing, so don't worry if your first layer doesn't look too bright. It doesn't look um, like what you see the end picture. It takes a while for it to, to actually look like that. It takes several layers. So I'm adding some more just at the horizon here. And you'll see it's working its way down. Now immediately... I'm taking the big brush here, the Simply Simmons, and I want to smooth those edges. I don't want hard edges at all. I want it to be all smooth. So I'm getting it wet, dabbing it, dabbing it on the, the cloth there, and just smoothing these edges. It'll still, the yellow will still kind of come down, but it won't be in like a line. You don't want a line, or maybe you do. If you do, then that's fine. Make sure this is still pretty wet here at the bottom. We'll give it a little bit more. Oops. Now I'm going to 
start adding some cerulean blue here. You don't want to get it too close to the yellow because you don't want it to turn into green. And then I added some um, ultramarine blue. And then over here at the top, I'm just to give it some, I don't know what the word it is, I'm looking for some depth, some interest in the sky, some of the dark. Um, again, I've got my Simmons brush and I wanna make sure these edges are really smooth. So I'm probably gonna turn it this way and let that blue paint come down and just spread it around. Smooth these edges here. I'm gonna put it flat for a minute so I can keep it from going all the way to the yellow. And right here in the center, I'm gonna put just a tad of this magenta, just a little here and there, just to kind of mix a little with the, the blue and have kind of an interesting sky with some purplish And then take my blender brush, or whatever you want to call it. I kind of call it a smoothing brush. And then smooth that out. Now we're getting really close to where the yellow is, and that's okay, because we're eventually going to meet, but not quite yet. And if it meets a little bit, that's okay. That's okay. Now, sometimes I will use the paper towel to kind of dab the sky to make um, um, like clouds or something like that. Actually, this is looking pretty good. I like how it's kind of light in here with a little bit of pink. There's a little pink over here, a little strip through there. Um, I really, I kind of like how this is turning out. It's buckle, buckling a little bit right here. I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but it's kind of got a little hump right here because of the water, and that's okay. Um, the, the secret to the buckling, the buckling is not to take it off the, uh, whatever you've got it taped onto until it's completely dry because it usually will kind of relax and kind of get flat again. So this is the sky. Can you see it? I don't know. You can see it too well. So this is layer one. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this um, part of the video. And the next one will be the second layer of the sky. So thanks so much. I hope everyone enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. And um, I look forward to getting to step two. Thanks. Hi. So this is part two of the boat painting. The sky is all dry now, the paper is very dry. It still is buckled a little bit, but that's okay, that's just watercolor. Um, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna take the, the cheap brush, the, Sim the Simply Simmons brush, and I'm going to wet the horizon here. And try not to have it um, go over where the boat should be. Just gonna do about an inch. Get it pretty wet. And then I've mixed up, or uh, not mixed, but this is a little cad red um, medium right here, not a whole lot. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just going to just dab a little of the red right at the horizon. I've got the, the board sitting on top of something to kind of keep it so that the, the red will go downhill. Get a little bit more. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Some red here.
Okay, now I'm gonna take and add a little bit of yellow, just straight across. Now I'm gonna take my cheek brush and get it wet and dab it so that it's not too wet and smooth these edges. Okay, I want it to be flat right now. Kind of keep it from moving too much. I'm going to have the water go a little bit more into the blue. Now I'm going to wet the rest of this. Kind of angle it from to the light so that you can see if you've missed any spots. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of the ultramarine that we already had mixed. I just dipped my brush in water. Oops, I used my cheap brush. Oh well, that's okay. And just kind of get a little bit of the indigo. A little bit of the cerulean. Clean my brush and then just kind of smooth it around. I'm just trying to get a little bit intense intensity here in the sky. Now we're going to go for the magenta. Let me switch to the, the good brush. A little bit of the pink, the magenta. Just kind of put it wherever you think it should be. And then I've got the smoothing brush to kind of move it around some. Whoa. And then I dropped my brush. <laughs> I'm not the most graceful person. Okay, I think I'm going to put a little bit more red at the horizon. And this again is the the cad red. Okay, let's take a the clean brush. And you see how I'm kind of dabbing the extra water? Don't want too much water. And then kind of smoothing this. I'm going to hold it this way just for a couple of seconds. Let that red get away from the horizon line, kind of spread some. You see how that works? Just let, let gravity do its thing. Well, the sky's looking really pretty with the little pinkish purple through here. I don't see any hard lines in here, which is good. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of the indigo kind of very high up here, just to give some intensity here. Now again, if you wanted to kind of do some white puffy clouds, you would take um, a piece of 
um, paper towel and kind of dab it in different areas and and then take the brush to kind of smooth the edges but I'm not going to I want kind of a clear um, kind of a rainbow type of sky so hopefully you can see this and this is the end of part two talk to y'all later okay so this is part three I think the sky Looks really good, everything is dry. Oops, it's kind of wobbly. Sorry about the video recording, um, that's not my expertise. Painting isn't either, but um, it's something I enjoy doing. Okay, so um, I like the sky. I like the, the upper part of the sky, really. I, I really like that. I like the intensity of the indigo and the um, cerulean and the ultramarine. So what I wanna do now is I think I need a little bit more kind of an orangey yellow bright horizon here. So I'm going to add more yellow, um, which is Windsor uh, lemon yellow, and then add some um, cad red kind of on top of it. I'm gonna get it wet first, but not super, super wet. I don't want the colors to, to really dissipate a whole lot. I'm gonna kind of keep them concentrated. So do just about an inch and then now we're going to come through with some yellow yeah that's already intensifying it some it looks looks better already I just want the horizon just to really kind of pop okay now I'm going to add just a little bit of the red Now we're going to take the blending one and then just make sure we don't have any hard lines. Oops, a little dab of water there. Now I'm gonna come up a little bit and add a little bit of water up here. I think it could use just a little bit more of the cerulean blue and maybe a little bit of the magenta. So I'm gonna use a little bit here And a little bit of the, the magenta, and then I'm going to smooth it out. Come down a little bit lower with that blue, just kind of make it get right by the yellow. And every time I dip my brush in the water, I'm dabbing it just a tad on the towel so it's not too wet when I'm using it to smooth things out. I think I'm going to do just maybe a little bit more yellow at the horizon just to I like bold colors I always have okay so now we're gonna take the blender and make sure that there's no hard red lines or yellow lines. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I think the horizon 
looks pretty good. Oops. Okay, so this was pretty quick. Um, you actually could let this dry and keep intensifying the the sky. You could add some more indigo up here if you wanted like a really dark sky. If y'all saw one of my um, other boat paintings, the one that had the rainbow sky that was really, really intense, I think I did this about, I don't know, maybe six or seven times and just kept intensifying the colors. I put lots of indigo up in here. I put a lot of the the magenta with the ultramarine blue and the cerulean. I mean, I just kept adding on and on. And I did a ton of the red and the lemon yellow up here to just really make the sky pop. But I think this is good enough for now. But if you wanted to do more, make sure you let this completely dry before you add more layers. Um, that's very, very important because if you don't, it's just not going to end up with the effect that you're looking for. So thanks again, and hang on for the next step. Thanks, bye. Hi, it's Diane again, and this is step four of the boat painting. So the sky is all done, it's completely dry. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take off the horizon tape here. I hope I can do it without shaking the camera too much. And hopefully, we've got a clean line, and it looks like we do. So that's awesome. So now we're going to take some tape and we're going to tape the top part so that we don't have any of the water paint trying to go up into the sky. Okay. Okay, so as you remember from the other um, tape, the other recording, we've got a few colors in the sky. We've got lemon yellow, we've got cad red, we've got magenta, cerulean, um, ultramarine blue, and indigo. So what we're going to do is we're going to do um, those same colors in the water because usually what you see in the sky is what's reflected in the water. So this is where we're gonna use the, the dry brush technique for just about the entire thing. So how that works is, and I'm gonna use the same colors. These are all, they're all dried now, so they'll get reactivated when I put the, um, the wet brush on it. So this is that cheap brush I was telling you about, the Simply Simmons um, uh, brush that cost about three bucks so um, dry brush technique is pretty rough on brushes like I said before and you don't want to use your expensive brushes to do this so simply simply Simmons is just like the best so dry brush technique is you get some paint on your brush and I usually will dab it a little bit on a paper towel or something and then you take it by its side and then you just go across the paper and the texture of the paper will grab some of the paint. You can't really tell with the yellow, so I'll do I'll do it with the magenta. So I've got some magenta on here. I'm going to tap it on my paper towel so I don't get too much. The brush is on its side and I'm just going to rub it across the paper. And you should be able to see there's little streaks and, and specks of the magenta on the watercolor paper. So that's what we're going to do for the water to start off with. So first I'm going to do some yellow in certain areas. And not, I'm just going to kind of be sporadic about where I put it. Some areas I think I put a little too much. So that's where this comes in handy. You always have that in your non-dominant hands so that you're ready to fix any mistakes you may have. You probably can't see it too well. There's not a whole lot of yellow on there. 
And that's the whole key to this, is just to do just a tad. Now I'm gonna come in with the magenta. I'm gonna dab it on the paper towel, on the, the napkin. What's really good to do is have a scrap piece here to test to see, hey, do I have too much? Do I have enough? Okay, that looks pretty good. bit more. Didn't have much on that at all. Now I'm going to do a little bit of the cerulean blue. I'm going to water it down a bit so that it's not so bright. We can always add more layers. If we want it darker, we can definitely add more layers, but I just want to do... Yeah, that's perfect. trying to stay away from where the yellow is. I'm not going to be able to do that perfectly, but I'm trying to because that'll just make green. But where it's hitting the magenta, it's turning a little purple, which is perfect because that's what the sky looks like. I'm being careful not to get it on the boat, but if I do, I can just dab it up. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do for now. This, doing the water really takes a lot of time and patience, you just do a little bit with the dry brush technique. You let it dry. You're going to do a little bit more to intensify. And then um, you just, just keep doing layers and layers and layers of these different colors. And um, making sure that you're leaving some of the paper white. Let that shine through because that's going to give you the, um, the sparkle of the water. We're also going to add some um, acrylic. Um, I think this is pronounced gouache. I'm not sure but we're gonna be adding that at the very end to really, really highlight some of the, the sparkle of the water. So that's it for today, and stay tuned for step five. Thanks. Hi, it's me again, Diane, and we're starting on step five. So the first dry brush is already dry, so we're gonna go in and do basically the same thing over again, except I'm not going to add any yellow this time. I'm just going to stick to the blues and just a little bit of the magenta. So again, I'm using Cheat Brush. Where is it? There we go. Simply Simmons. Love these things. I wish I could get a commission on <laughs> every time someone buys this that I recommend because I would be rich. I love them. Okay, we're going to start with the horizon here, the horizon line, I'm going to do a little bit of the ultramarine blue just at the line here, just going to the boat, and then immediately get a wet brush and smooth out the edge. You don't want a hard line. Add just a little bit more blue, a little more water, 
Just spread it out. Oops, got a little in the boat. That's okay, we'll fix it. Only water here. Smooth it out. Looks like I could use a little bit more over here. Okay, we're gonna clean brush to smooth that out. A little bit more here. I don't know why that just keeps going away. But we'll get it. I think that's it now. Smooth out the edges. Now I've done the, the water about halfway down, so I'm going to work on some dry brush technique down here where it is dry. I'm not going to go back up there yet. So I'm going to use some of the, the ultramarine blue. I'm going to dab it and test it on here first. Okay, that's good. Oops, I spilled some water here. I'm just going to stay below where that paper is already wet. Get a little bit more. Dab it. Test it. Because you don't want to go on too heavy here. Looks like I may have a little bit of a line there, so I'm just going to take the water down. And that's okay. Okay, a little bit more of the ultramarine. Okay, that's it for step five. Hi, okay, so this is Diane again, and we're gonna work on step six. We're gonna continue doing um, some dry, dry brush technique on the water here. Um, we're gonna do several layers before this is over. So this is the part where you might get impatient, uh, but just stick with me, it's really worth the wait. Um, so here are the paints that were left from last night, They're, they've dried up so they will reactivate easily, just adding some water to it. A little magenta. And so remember the dry brush, I will dab it on a paper towel or um, a napkin or something and then test it on this other piece of paper here just as a test just to make sure it doesn't have too much on it you don't want to put a lot of paint on just to just to highlight that pink magenta now i'm going to do the ultramarine And just kind of go all over.
get a little in the boat, just take a, your paper towel and kind of dab it out. It's going to get pretty much covered up with the, the different browns, but you don't want too much. indigo blue that I had down here. Just a little bit of that and do kind of towards the bottom. A little more indigo. Okay, that's it. Um, stay tuned for the next step. Make sure you let this dry. I mean, you could keep doing this over and over many, many times to get the intensity that you want on the water. Um, I'm probably gonna do probably two more layers of the dry brush and then go over it with um, some ultramarine, a light wash of ultramarine to kind of put it all together. So thank you so much, bye. Hi, this is Diane and this is step number seven. So we have, um, I think about two layers of the, the dry brush technique on here. And we're gonna do another one here with some of the paint that we have in there. I'm gonna do some magenta and then some um, ultramarine and a little bit of indigo. sure it's not too wet. Okay. It's a little too much there, so I'm going to dab it up a little. Don't forget that little part in here. The little horizon part on this boat, by the boat. I'm going to do a little bit of the magenta, not a lot. I don't want it too purpley. Well, that made it kind of purple there, so that's okay. dark so I'm gonna water it down just a little a 
you'll start to see that the paper is grabbing the paint in some places and it, it's really starting to look starting to look like water. Putting a little bit of the ultramarine at the horizon. It's going to be a little bit darker there. And I think I need a little bit more by the boat where it hits the, touches the water. Just a tad of yellow. I said I wouldn't do yellow. I lied. There's some white spots over here that I want to put just a little bit of yellow in. Just here and there. I'm only going where it's white. Okay, this is step number seven. I think I said seven. Um, thanks a bunch. Let this dry and we're going to come back in um, when it's dry and do I think just one last wash of a color on it and then we'll start on the boat. Thanks. Okay this is start, um, step eight. We're, I think this is going to be the last step for the water and then we'll move on to the boat. So I'm going to do um, a little bit more dry brush, but before I do that, I'm going to kind of work on the horizon line here and just paint kind of a um, ultramarine blue and then smooth the edges, bring it down some. It's real important to smooth those edges. Then you won't have any, oops, I didn't mean to do that much. And now I'm going to smooth that edge. And make sure you get this little spot here. Okay, now I'm going to use the same color, ultramarine blue, and do some more dry brush, kind of testing it on this paper first. Oh, a little too much. too wet. 
Okay, this was a quick one. So the next step, we will start working on the boat. The water's not completely done yet. Um, once we do the boat, we're going to add some of the white gouache to um, kind of do some sparkly stuff on the water to kind of make it pop. And then, um, and then we'll be, oh, and the birds, and then we'll be done. Thanks, bye. Okay, we're up to, I think this is step number nine. So we're gonna start on the boat. I took the tape off the back, and if you notice some of the, the blue kind of bled underneath the tape on the horizon, that's okay, we'll deal with it. We'll pretend it's an island or land back there, that's okay. Um, the paper buckled a lot. I usually use 300 pound um, arches paper for this in a block. So that really helps to keep it straight and can handle a lot of water. So that's probably what happened there, but that's okay. It'll be fine. That's what happens. So now we're going to start on the boat. Um, so again, this is, we're going to use some dry brush technique and, um, several layers to get the, the look that we want. First, we're going to take some burnt sienna and I've got, I think three colors here probably can't really see. Um, I've got burnt sienna and um, let's see, what's this? Burnt umber and then raw umber. So we're gonna start with the burnt sienna with the dry brush technique and we're just going to load our brush with it, test it on the, on this thing. And we're going to just go the direction of the boards. Just adding some texture to the wood here. Oops, a little too much. We'll dab it, that's okay. Okay, we're not going, going to worry about the inside of the boat. We'll deal with that later. These um, um, next few steps are gonna be pretty short, but you have to let it dry between each one. So we've got some texture on there. And then when this is dry, I'll come back and do the next part number 10. And um, we'll start putting this boat together. I, th I think it's going to be um, pretty, I think it's going to be fun. I hope you're enjoying this and um, hang on for step 10. Okay, so now we're on to step 10 where we're going to start painting the boat. Um, we already did the dry brush technique of the burnt sienna um, in the direction of the planks. So we're going to now paint um, um, the wooden planks. And I've chosen, let's see, what have I chosen? A... Um, raw umber for that. Um, I think that'll be a good contrast for the burnt sienna. So I've got a size two round um, Kalinske sable brush and all I'm going to do is just follow follow those wooden planks. You'll still see the dry brush technique underneath, which will give the wood a look of being weathered. Oops, I got a little bit in the water, which really doesn't matter much because we're going to be using the same colors to make the the reflection in the water and the shadow. I'm going to try to get the camera to zoom in on that so that you can see that it does a pretty good job um, with the dry brush technique of making it look like wood. So I'm going to try to 
get it where you can really see it a little bit better. Now the next step is um, to do some shading um, from the, the bow of the boat um, kind of down, but this needs to be dried completely before we do that. So this was going to be a short one. Then all the rest of the, the videos will be pretty short too because they're just small steps on the boat. Okay, thanks. Hi, okay, this is the 11th part. Um, so what we're gonna do here is I've got a very, very tiny brush. I think it's a, um, gosh, it's so tiny I can't read. I think it's a size one round. It's really, really tiny. Um, so just get the smallest one that you have. And I'm using a um, raw umber, which is kind of a dark, um, dark brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at the pencil lines or the graphite lines underneath and just trace over them um, for the spaces between the wood planks. And I'm gonna have a real light touch to it, um, hopefully, and just make it as light as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect because this is an old boat. And if you think the, the line is a little bit too heavy, you can just take a damp brush and kind of kind of smear it out a little. damp brush right now. Got a little too thick right there. Take my damp brush. I thought that was a little bit too dark. Kind of lighten that a bit. Okay, now that we're going to work on, while that's drying, we're going to work on the inside of the boat. And this is probably going to be kind of hard for you to see. Um, I wish I had a better video set up here, but, um, but I don't. Okay, I'm going to take um, sepia, which is a pretty dark, pretty dark brown. And I'm going to just fill in the inside of the boat. And a, I'm using a size two. I left a little bit of white over there, a little bit of the paper right here that's white um, because there's like at the very um, um, end of the boat, there's like a little shelf thing there. And I'm taking a kind of a damp brush and going over it a little bit so it's not too, too bright white. And then I left a little white spot over here. I'm gonna do the same too, just a little bit of damp. There we go just so that you can see 
that there that represents something is there um, on the little shelf here. Um, you'll see that you've got some lines that um, you traced. Those are going to be like the um, gosh, I can't remember. I used to own a boat. I can't remember what that's called, but the the little wires there, the lines um, that you can hold on to. Um, We'll be painting that last, so don't worry about those right now. We'll get to those later. And we'll go ahead and, let's see, can you see? Okay, let's get this better here. While we're letting the other, the other um, layers dry, we can go ahead and start painting the birds. And my chair is so squeaky and I have to sit to do this, so I apologize for the noise. It's a comfortable chair, I guess that's what counts. So I've got, a, I think a size, size zero, it's really, really tiny, really tiny brush to do um, the birds. You also could use a micron pen if you wanted, if you had a sepia colored one or, or even black, it doesn't matter. You know, you could use that. You'd have a little bit better control um, than uh, if you don't have a tiny brush. But I'm gonna give it a try here. Okay, this is step 12 and we're going to keep working on the boat. It's completely dry. So what we're gonna do now is do some shading um, where the it's gonna be darker up here and it's going to um, get a graduated lighter and lighter over here. And how you do this is, um, or at least how I do it, is I put some paint right here and then take a wet clean brush and smooth it out and I just keep smoothing it out. We're also going to start doing a little bit of the reflection and shadow in the water. So I've got my number two Kalinske's brown um, brush here. So I'm going to take some um, burnt, hang on, what color is it? Um, raw umber, I'm sorry, it's raw umber. And I'm just gonna put some here at the top of the boat here. Not a whole lot, just a little. And then I'm gonna take a wet, dry, I'm sorry, a wet, damp, clean one, and I'm gonna smooth it out. You see how it's coming out? Rinse it off, dab it. It's a little darker here. It's getting lighter as you come around over here. We're gonna let that dry some. We're gonna work on a little bit of the, the shadow in the water. So I'm gonna go right here on the water line here. And then take a, a damp brush, kind of spread it out. So I'm kind of doing a reflection or a mirror image of the boat itself um, with the water. So now I'm going to take the, the raw umber and kind of drop it in here.
Now I'm going to take a damp, clean brush and kind of move it around some. Now this, now I'm taking a, a clean, um, damp brush, no paint, just water on it, the tiny one, and I'm going to kind of go out here around the edges to make it not so clean, just kind of spread it out some, like you would see ripples in the water, or the colors in the water. See if that's dry. No, it's not quite dry. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of the, um, um, what color did I use there? A oh, raw umber. A little bit more on this side. I use the wrong brush. I'm a doofus sometimes. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more of the sepia on the inside of the boat. That was sepia. Now I'm going to spread it out. I think that's about all I can do now. The water needs to dry. The reflection in the water and the shadow in the water needs to dry some. The boat needs to dry, and then I'll do some more darkening of this um, shadow up here. Um, so that's it for this one. Hang on. Okay, we're starting on, I think this is step 13, I think. I can't seem to keep up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add some more shadow over here with some sepia. I might mix some Payne's Gray with it. Um, I might. I'll see. And then we're going to finish or keep going on the, the shadow here. the damp brush, smooth those edges.
I think I have a little bit too much water here. So I'm just going to kind of dab the paint. Get that color in there. And then I'll take a, a pretty dry, clean brush and smooth those edges some. I think that's good. Now we're going to work on the shadow and the water. Get right here, dark, right at the waterline. And then a damp, clean brush to smooth that out. I'm just sort of dropping some color in here and there. And then I'm going to smooth it out with a damp brush. I think that's about all I can do for this um, step. It needs to dry, and once it dries, I'll make this a little bit more intense, the shadow, and then I will wor work on this reflection. And I think I'll be pretty much done with the reflection on the next time around. So just stay tuned, thanks. Okay, we're now on step 14, and what we're gonna do now is we're going to work on the the shadow and the water, the reflection, um, make it a little bit darker here and kind of bleed it down some. We're gonna add the little railings on the, the boat here and then add a little bit more shadow here. I think I've got... Let's see if I can do a better angle here. I think that's good. Okay, so first I'm gonna take some of the sepia, which is a pretty dark brown with a very, very tiny brush, I believe it's a size zero, and just right at the waterline. And then take my blender brush and smooth it out. I'm just putting a little bit of, of the sepia kind of here and there, kind of spreading it out. Gonna take the blender brush. I think that's pretty good there. Now I'm gonna take that tiny brush again and with some, um, I think it's lamp black. You could use Payne's Gray. You could um, use sepia. I'm going to do the, the little railings here. Put a little bit of the the um, black inside the boat here, and I'm going to smooth it out some, just to show that it's a pretty dark shadow in there.
Now I'm gonna take some of the sepia and kind of intensify this, this shadow here. Get my blender brush. Drop a little bit more paint in here. And I've got water already on the boat right here, so it's going to blend a little bit on its own and kind of stretch out from that corner area, which is what we want it to do. Okay, I think this is it for this step. Um, the next step, once this dries, we'll add some, we're just about done with this. We're gonna use a little bit of the white gouache to do a little bit of highlight on the bird's breast right here. Um, do some kind of specks in the water here and over here and just maybe a few other places just to make it really sparkle. Um, and then I think we're gonna be done with this. Okay, well hang on for step 15 next. Okay, I believe this is going to be our last step. Um, so we're going to um, add some white sparkle here and there um, around the, on the water. And then, um, and I just noticed I forgot to do the legs for this little seagull here. So let me, um, let me do that real quick. Blend that out a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to get some gouache. This is the brand that I have, Turner Acryl Gouache. And it's a um, opaque paint and I've got it in white here, and I just put a little dab on my um, palette thing here. So I'm gonna take a, a, a pretty tiny brush. Let's see what I have here. This is a size zero, and I'm gonna put just a little bit of water on the, the gouache to make it um, a little bit easier to, to paint with. Test it here. You see on the the dark what it does. And I'm just going to make some highlights here and there. Around here, the kind of the base of the boat. Just kind of just dab a little here and there. Put a little bit over here on this side of the boat. You see, I'm just kind of making little marks. I think I made that a little too much, so I kind of just making. Just little highlight marks here and there.
Now I'm going to put a little bit here on the bird's breast right here just to give it some shading. And then I'm going to take the same brush since it's so tiny with a little bit of water and kind of smooth that out. You don't want a white stripe there. You just want a little bit of, of white there. And I'm going to take, I'm going to do a little bit around, around the top of this, the boat, the wood here, just to have it kind of step, stand out a little bit. Maybe that first wood plank a little, little bit there. Now I'm going to take the tiniest brush I have. It's really tiny. And get some of the, the white on there. And I'm going to just go down on the little pole here. These are usually metal poles just on the left side of each of the things that go down. And just a very, very small touch of white there just to show that it's metal. Um, that's something you don't really have to do, but it's something that I like to do. And I think we're calling this done. Um, I believe it is finished. So here you go. So let's talk about the painting. Um, whenever I do a painting, I, I after it's done, I look at it to see, okay, what should I have done differently? What could I have done differently? Um, I really like this guy, how it was, how I did it. Um, the paper still buckled a little bit, um, but that's okay. It'll flatten out some more. You can put it, when it's completely dry, um, put a heavy book on it and it, it will it'll flatten it out a bit. Um, I like the the boat. I think the boat turned out pretty good. I'll get down in here so that you can see up close. And the water's okay. Um, I was disappointed in how the the tape did not prevent the water from bleeding up in the top. Um, so I'm just going to look at that and just say it's a distant um, island or something like that. You could, if this happened to you, you could go in and um, put some darker, maybe Payne's Gray or something in there to, to kind of make it look more like an island. I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, another thing that I think would have, this, I think this is the fourth time I've done this painting. And I've done them always on a block. And I think that made a huge difference in the buck, buckling. I know it did for the buckling. And um, the, the tape here across has, hasn't bled on me before, but it has on this one. So let's, let's take the tape off and see what we have here. See if the tape did pretty good for the sides. you go it's finished I hope you all enjoyed this I am uh, like I said before I'm not um, an expert on doing videos but um, I enjoyed doing this and I hope that you all got something out of it and if you want me to do more um, you know let me know I'm hopefully going to learn more about how to splice and stitch videos together so that I don't have to do 15 different um, videos and I can do all in one and you can just stop and start whenever you want. So thank y'all so much and I hope everyone enjoys painting. Bye.